A man from Milton Keynes is hoping to set the world's fastest record for cycling from Land's End to John O'Groats and back, again, standing up. Idai Makaya is the elliptico journey this weekend in memory of his brother, who died in a skydiving accident. Ben Schofield's been to meet him. Idai Makaya and his elliptico bike, part cross-trainer, part bicycle, preparing for a 1,700-mile record attempt, all in memory of his brother. I miss him a lot and I think what I'm doing will help me work through that. It hit us really, really hard. Um, it was, it's, it's probably the worst day of my entire life. I've never experienced anything as, 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 as sad or as painful as that. What has happened has happened and for me this is about finishing his journey. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Out, in, out. Garai Makaya an obsessive skydiver, introducing the sport he loved to Botswana. He'd completed the 500 jumps needed for an instructor's license, but on his very next jump, he lost control and fell to earth, suffering fatal injuries. He's always said he was proud of what I did and it, it kind of spurred him on as well to do what he was doing because I introduced lots of people to cycling, especially long distance cycling. and. He liked what I was doing and, you know, I think we were doing similar things in our wacky sports. Idai already holds the record for riding an elliptigo from Land's End to John O'Groats. He now wants the record for the return journey as well. And he says he's going to cycle 150 miles a day for 11 days straight. And each of those days is going to feel much longer than the one before. These bikes were originally designed to help runners to train without impact. The ride will be Idai's longest on the elliptigo. He's asking others to join in by cycling their longest ride and is hoping to raise money for a documentary about his brother's skydiving legacy. Ben Schofield, BBC Look East in Milton Keynes. Good luck to him now. OK, we're getting going. Jim all the way from the US, myself, Alan behind and I think Stu's gone. Rod, Rod brought them here after hosting them and Kim's walking behind us but we're kind of on the move now. Everything's official. The first time I've gone around the Land's End Visitor Centre and it's so quiet. Uh, we're just happy to be going now. Um, this is beautiful. It's a beautiful day. It's a, and it's really good to have you here Jim. It's a, it's unreal, even though we only see each other every couple of years. It's like you, you, you know, it's like it was just yesterday, isn't it? Lovely views. Entering Penzance, St. Michael's Mount. I came here last year with my whole family, so that brings back the memories. It's in the morning, 6.04 a.m. And we are coming through Penzance on schedule, averaging 11.7 miles per hour. Our goal average is 10, so we're doing okay for the first hour of our 1700 mile ride in honor of Garai Makaya, uh, my brother. Eighteen miles in, covered eighteen miles. We're riding the A30 for the whole day basically. Motorway conditions. But it's safe. We're gliding down an 8% hill. And then we've got another 10% long hill ahead. Would you look at that? Massive hill, it's a mile long. We 
get into Red Rust. I think they call it Red Rust. We've done 26 miles in 2 hours and 14 minutes. It's Avers Junction and the time is 7.23 a.m. 7.21 according to the Garmin. My watch is 2 minutes ahead. Thirty-three miles. Thirty-three miles and two fifty-two. Beautiful Polish countryside. Uh, exactly eight a.m. wind coming from the north so we're riding into it or sometimes to the side because we are going kind of eastwards and northwards averaging 11.6 miles per hour overall we've nearly done 40 miles now and that's been 3 hours and 20 minutes of ride we're approaching Kim for our first um, pit stop. We should be somewhere near Victoria. And we've ridden 47 and a half miles exactly. The time is 9.11. And that's SOS 796B. You okay, Jim? No. What's up? Uh, back and neck. Not your back, please. I've never had a back problem. Hey, this is the week of back problems. She's got one, he's got one, I've got one. I can't even hold my head up. Oh, no, come on. Oh, oh no. Have you got any ibuprofen now? Yeah, Jim, it's really hard to get back on the bike when you've got off. Okay, we're leaving Jim with Kim because Jim's back is really, really bad. And then we'll hopefully catch him at the next, at the next, next major stop and um, hopefully he'll be feeling better and able to ride again. Um, yeah, we're back on it now. Okay, guys, take care. Thanks for everything. Getting a record validation here, that's all. Um, there's another local service down there. We're just getting our records validated and then um, we continue. It's a shame because this is only three miles, four miles from where we stopped with Kim and left Jim. Uh, but we've got to do it because, you know, this is a record attempt officially. We're just going to spend the rest of the day on this busy motorway. Well, it's A30, but it's like a motorway. Just passing the Eden project. Reminds me of my family. We've done 70 miles in 6 hours, 37 minutes. <coughs> average speed, 10.6 miles per hour. Our moving average is 12 miles per hour. <coughs> We've been climbing for a long time. But now we've got a downhill <coughs> that goes on a good couple of miles. Eighty-five miles in seven hours, fifty-one minutes. It's one forty-five. The heat is killing me. It's probably twenty-five degrees, but going up these mountains, it's really hot. The boys are doing well. We're just trying to pace ourselves. It's tough. Gotta to stay hydrated, otherwise we could get heat stroke and that could kill this whole mission. We covered 95 miles in about eight hours and 50 minutes. We're just outside Oakhampton. We've had lunch, Kim made another nice meal. Jim's got back on the bike and ridden off. Stu's gone after him and Alan and I will follow just now. I have to go through Oakhampton um, to get
get a stamp because that's my Audax control. A really nice guy called Chris came here and took some really good professional photos with his camera um, and signed our witness log books as well. He's been following us on the tracker, so that was really great. 100 miles, 100 miles covered in 9.46. We're just leaving Oakhampton, 9 hours 46 minutes. Finally entering Exeter, 119 miles covered in 11 hours and 14 minutes. We've been riding through Exeter town center. Nearly 200 kilometers. 122 miles, 122 miles, 11 hours and 40 minutes. We're just leaving Exeter, 200 kilometers covered in 11 hours, 55 minutes. Sorry, 11 hours 50 minutes. 11 hours 50 minutes. Bumped into Ian. Leaving an area called Broadcliffe, heading towards Taunton. I'm hoping we've got about 20 miles left, but it might be 30. We've covered 128 miles. Ian and Bruce have joined us, um, going to his house for dinner, and then we're taking from there. He lives in Taunton, which is at 150 miles, which is where we stop for today. His friend Bruce is up ahead with Stu. Jim's gone with Kim to the hotel, because his back is tired. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I slept. Um, I slept like a baby, but when I woke up, I was really tired and disappointed that I had to wake up. I was yeah. oh. <laughs> okay, we're getting ready to leave Taunton. It's quarter. It's twelve past five. By quarter past, we'll be rolling. Um, we're trying to get out as far as we can because at seven fifteen, there's an interview I'm doing on the radio. We're in a place called Highbridge Burnham on Sea. We've now covered 173 miles in total, but today we've done 17 miles. Everyone seems okay. Um, there, was, there wasn't proper coffee at the hotel, so my mood isn't great, but other than that, we're all good. There are a lot of caravans in this place, everywhere, seas of caravans. In about half an hour, we're due to be doing an interview with BBC Radio. Um, thanks for thanks for calling. Um, yes, it's day two now. We've been riding since we've been riding for about two hours, and we've just pulled over for the first time because we knew you guys were calling. Um, so we're having a cup of coffee, and some of the guys I'm with are having breakfast right now. And um, I'm sitting in the support vehicle because luckily we've got a lovely lady called Kim who's supporting us um, and meeting us at various points along the route and carrying a lot of our luggage. So. You know, we can live like normal people at the end of each day when we when we stop. <laughs> yes, um, an elliptical bike is a bike that looks a bit like a scooter. It's got a tall handlebars and then a, a frame like a scooter, but it's it's also like a an elliptical 
trainer machine from the gym so you've got a, a, a motion kind of like skiing um, it makes your body move like you're running and they, they, they were designed to help runners cycle whilst actually training for running because you're supporting your body weight and using the same sorts of muscles as running but unlike running there's no impact so you, you can go on for a long time just like you would on any other bicycle well, you know, I've, I've, I've trained with elliptical bikes for the last eight years, I've, 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 I've cycled on them and I've done a lot of long distance um, cycling. I'm, I'm part of an organization called Audax UK, which is the UK Long Distance Cycling Association. So I've done many long rides, but the, this is by far the longest. It's almost double as far as I've ever gone. I did two years ago Land's End to John O'Groats, which is um, you know basically we're doing twice now so I have done many long rides but um, as you probably aware the reason I'm doing this very long ride is because I'm trying to um, raise awareness for a project I'm doing in memory of my brother who passed away last year so um, that's what this challenge is mainly about for me sure uh, my brother his name was Garai he's a, he was a skydiver um, based in Botswana, he started living in Botswana around around the year 2000 and because he was a skydiver already at the time and skydiving didn't exist in the country, he um, started setting up, uh, basically he started setting up skydiving as a sport in Botswana and um, he used to jump, he, he, he managed to convince the military to allow him to jump with them so that um, he could practice on his own but the military wasn't really fun, they, they just did it as drills um, and lots of people seem to be interested so he started um, he started forming a club and basically he set up an association there and he's, he's, he'd been doing it for a long time but unfortunately um, in February last year he was involved in a in an accident um, and he, and he passed away and um, yeah that was um, that was really tragic for all of us oh thanks well I what I'm doing is part of what I call the 2018 longest ride challenge and basically I'm encouraging people who ride bikes to do their longest ride this year so that's what I'm doing I'm trying to set an example um, I've got my friend Alan here he's doing the same ride as me he's going all the way um, we've got lots of other friends joining us along the way I've got a friend called Jim who's here from the US he's riding the first 300 miles with us so this is his second day then he's going to catch a train at the end of today in Shrewsbury and head back to Heathrow Airport I've got my friend Stu from Leighton Buzzard he's also doing that <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wish I could be. I, I wish it was a sleeper train and I could be on it. That that would really help. Yeah, so that's uh, that's what we're doing. So the way people can help is if they search for 2018 longest ride challenge, they'll find my website and on there I've, I've got a fundraising page as well because we're trying to raise funds to make a documentary because my brother was involved in in a lot of filming and we've got a lot of footage of him. So we're trying to make a documentary about his skydiving community in Botswana that he set up and about what he did etc but we want this to be a fundraising documentary because his skydiving exploits were all um, linked to skydive to, to 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 charitable projects so we'd like to make this documentary and do it to a really high standard a professional standard so we've got professional filmmakers involved and we want to make something to a standard that can you know be entered into awards and that kind of thing and that that will be watched a lot and that can generate some money afterwards and that money will be dedicated to the charities that my brother used to work with so that way for me it's a way of getting closure um, but also doing something useful thank you very much Stuart take care you're welcome thank you so much guys thank you Thank you so much. Bye bye. These are the suburbs of Bristol. We're just entering. Very nice places here. Finally in Bristol, Clifton Bridge is just across to the left, but right on top of a massive mountain. So it looks like one big climb to come. We're at the Clifton Bridge now. Just waiting for our turn to cross. There we go. Oh, I think we've been messing around. I think they're just supposed to ride through.
it. You see everything from here. It's beautiful. A friend James has joined us. We met. We met up in Bristol for coffee and breakfast with our good friend Lynn from the US. Uh, it was really good to see Lynn. Kim got a bit roughed up at the um, last stop where we did the interview. Some wild woman came claiming that was a spot, a vendor, and she started shoving Kim around. I was very upset to hear that. But it's all, all good, we're all well. Going to the Severn Bridge. It's over there. We're approaching the Severn Crossing. It's uh, taken us 15 miles to get here from the coffee shop. James is still with us, but he's about to turn back. Stu is still working out like crazy. And we're barely hanging in there, right? But the upper body will tire. Um, you know, when you get tired, the upper body will tire. bridge is quite long maybe a mile you can see it's still got a bit to run when we get to the end we'll be exactly on 60 miles today so 60 miles since we started and that will have taken us a good couple of hours I can't remember how many probably six hours The lovely Tintern Abbey, out in the mountains, getting close to Monmouth. Hey, there we are, well done. Yeah. Hi guys. Hey, just look right You're here. a sight yeah. for sore eyes. What a lovely spot. That's where we tried to find our yeah, we went. It looks like you guys stopped about a mile the back row. Are they waiting for us? Yeah. Alright, what's up? What's up? What's up? We've done 74.4 miles today um, and 231 miles in total. The time is exactly 1 o'clock. There's a big river beside us. We're still cruising into Monmouth. Just had lunch. Tim's joined us in Monmouth. Look at these beautiful scenes! We're just outside Hereford, maybe four or five miles. Time is three o'clock. We've covered 89.9 miles today and in total 246 miles. Entering Hereford. That's not Stuart. It's just a guy on a scooter. Fifteen miles to Shrewsbury. The time is five minutes to eight PM. 
just Tim and Alan and myself. Stu and Jim have, are catching the train at Shrewsbury, they're long gone. And I'm about to meet Mark on this road and he'll lead me into where we're staying. And that's going to be the end of day two. We'll end at about 305 miles in total. And we'll end at about 140 miles ridden today. 300 miles covered, it's 8.35 in the evening on the 25th of June. So, uh, we'll start all again tomorrow. See ya. So that's 9 o'clock, 303 miles on the 25th of June. We get cracking again tomorrow. I used to, I cooked myself some porridge this morning and yeah, it works out. Getting going at yeah, I mean, the only thing be, be 10 past 5, we're in Shrewsbury and we've got 150 miles of riding, we've ridden 303 so far, this is day 3. Starting day 3, just riding through Shrewsbury, I'm with Mark and Tim and Alan will probably meet Andy later in the day uh, it might be a scorcher but it's been good stayed with Mark's friend Francis she was such a lovely host um, really grateful for the help people are giving us and um, I only slept four hours I've been averaging four hours a night because I'm totally messing around just messing around with doing stuff on the computer <coughs> um, etc but um, I'm actually feeling okay right now, but I must get good night's sleep tonight in the Lake District. We're going up the Shapfell climb today, so it's going to be a proper day of training. Uh, training? Riding. It's going to be a proper day of riding. So far, so good. It's cold, it's chilly, but I prefer that to hot. As soon as we start pedaling, uh, I think we'll be all good. Tim's had a puncture, we discovered that his rim has gone, so he's had a rim failure, um, he's going to have to stop the ride now, so Kim's going to come pick him up, and, um, and then he'll decide where to go, because he was supposed to go and do some training in the Lake District, he'll probably still do that, but we're going to continue riding now without him, it's um, such a pity. Um, Tim, how many miles have you done in total today with us? Yeah, we've gone 20 today. Okay. He was with us for about 110 miles, but um, I think this is where it ends. What a pity. Um, big crack along the rim. It's just failed from mileage. It's, it's old from the brakes. Hey, okay, we've reached a support vehicle. Kim had just gone ahead of us. So Tim's been saved, basically. I'm not yet sure what he's going to do. Um, if he's going to call it quits here or not but I don't think the rim is safe it punctured already so surely it's gonna puncture again <laughs> Tim's gone back to Whitchurch his journey is over after about 115 miles um, but so glad he came though um, so 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 glad that so many people are supporting us we continue on to Warrington it's about 25 miles. The time is 9.55. We've traveled 47 and a half miles this morning. We are on about 355, maybe 360 miles in total. And we're just south of Warrington. Picked up a friend from Hungary. Kim's here. And Alan and I are eating for the first time today. Yay! <laughs> Speak of the devil <laughs> and he'll appear. Hey, hey. hey Andy. Nice see you. Okay. Okay. It's time to say goodbye. It's just Alan and I now.
This silent place is the top of Shap Fell. Eight miles of climbing, but it was absolutely worth it. Um, it's totally silent up here, but it was a long, long climb. Luckily, it has cooled down today, and um, Kim's just given us some stuff. Uh, everyone's doing well. Five thirteen. Five thirteen, and today's the twenty seventh. Five thirteen on the twenty seventh of June. We've covered four hundred and fifty eight miles in total. One hundred and fifty five yesterday. We are in Penrith. We're in Penrith, and we're starting at about 5.15. It's 5.13 now. We'll probably start at 5.15, and we'll head out. Today's going to be the shortest day we've had so far, and hopefully that's going to bring us back to the land of the living, because it was really tough yesterday. We, um, uh, we went up Shapfell, and that was uh, luckily when the heat had died down, but there was a massive heat wave yesterday. So it's been tough, um, but we're getting there. It's now 5.36. We're heading towards Carlisle. It's about 15 miles from here. Just along the M6. The M6 is to our left. <coughs> the cattle don't look real, do they? Now the sun is shining from our right, but the fields there are beautiful. I hope they show up in this video. I feel like I cheated to death. Oh, I see a sparrowhawk flying low. Wow, it's being chased. No, I thought it was being chased. It's flying like nobody's business. It is huge. Probably a goshawk. It's, it's massive. Just flying along the fence, hunting. They hunted this time. It's half past five. Right there is the petrol station where I slept when I did the end to end in May 2016. Time now is 6.39. We've traveled 17.7 miles. We are in Carlisle. We're riding through Carlisle. Our route got closed off. One of the bridges was damaged. So we got a bit lost, but we're back on route now. Carlisle is a big place. Looks quite nice actually. That's the M6, M74 motorway. Getting towards Gretna now. Time is nearly half past seven in the morning. 7.40 a.m. and we're just entering Scotland. I'm here too, <laughs> I was here. <laughs> So this is great, we're just getting into Scotland. Uh, well done, Alan. Yeah. I'm really happy today. We're on National Cycling Network Route 74. We've covered 493 miles. The time is 8.40, so we've been in Scotland now for nearly an hour. <laughs> you just stand on them. Stand, stand on pedal. Yep. And Alan, your, your bottles, you might want to fill up with water. Yeah, I'm just get hold of Kim, I don't know. Oh, okay, trying to get hold of Kim. Didn't have a minute ago, Okay. So we've gone 44 miles. And we're on 500 miles in total. Time is 11.24. We've ridden 51.84 miles today. In total, we've ridden 509 miles, and we're just making our way towards. What's the next stop, Alan? The next stop is Carnwath. We're going towards Carnwath. Um, this road is really slow. It's quite warm today, but it doesn't feel as bad as yesterday. Still beside the motorway. It's now 11:55. We've done 58 miles today. Approaching Moffat. 
going to veer to the left, keep going north towards Edinburgh. We're going really slowly and that's helping keep our body temperature down. Much more comfortable today by just going slowly. I can even appreciate the beauty. Today has actually been okay. We are now at 525 miles. Alan's taking the road less traveled because the road surface here is so bad. But having said that, it has suddenly smoothed out after hours. You can rejoin over here, Alan. It's fine. Sixty-eight miles ridden today. Gentle tailwind starting. The windmills weren't moving when we first saw them on the horizon. Now they are. And I'm running out of water. Hi Kim. Seventy miles covered. It's now one forty eight PM. That's a M seventy four junction fourteen. Edinburgh now, about to meet with a guy called Alex, who's going to be doing the end to end as his longest ride, one day after we leave John O'Groats, so that's I think Saturday he leaves, so wishing him luck, but he'll ride with us for a few miles, and hopefully that'll be good. Forty miles from Edinburgh and it's looking lovely here. Forty miles from Edinburgh. Time is twenty-five past two in the afternoon on the twenty-seventh of June. We've covered five hundred and thirty-five miles. All the details. But it's um, really lovely here. So much to see. This area is fantastically beautiful. We even saw people paddling in the um, river and some of the holiday cottages and stuff down there are fantastic. It's called Thankerton. I better keep note of that. Time is 3.25. We've covered 88 miles today and our total is 500 and 46 <laughs> Alex has come to join us He'll be doing the end to end on Sunday And we're approaching Carnworth now It's about 3 miles is it? Yeah and we think Kim will be there That's going to be our control stop We'll have a little stop. Fantastic out here. Oh, is it? It was then 15 minutes. Yeah, I know it was delaying by about 10 minutes. That's what that, that was a feeling we had, but um, 
but everyone seems to be able to find this so it's obviously working Dave's come out to see us we're approaching the fourth road bridge it's 6 24 p.m. 111 miles and a total of 569 miles Do both. Look at that, it's lovely, isn't it? Wow. Seven sixteen. And we've traveled hundred and twenty miles today, taking our total to five hundred and eighty eight miles. We're meeting Kim at the other side of this bridge, having a snack and then we're pressing on 20 more miles. May, and then we, we're done at maybe 145 miles for today. It's been a really slow day, bit of a wasted opportunity. We're gonna get home late, or wherever late. And there's Big Al, excitedly dashing off for food. Finally leaving the bridge, we rode right through the cloud. We're now in the cloud just coming out, you couldn't see anything. Today's been a bit of an epic fail, it's 9 p.m. We have traveled 135, 134 miles and a total of 591 miles. We wasted a lot of time today. It's also been very hilly and very slow. We need to pick things up tomorrow. We need to try and get some sleep. I've averaged four hours a night. We need to improve on that. So that's the plan for tomorrow. Put in a big day. It's all very beautiful, but it slows you down. It's just hill after hill after hill. And we froze. We froze at the fourth road bridge. It had a microclimate. Totally froze us. But we're back now. <coughs> we're in Kinross at 139 miles done today. Um, the time is 9.29 and our total is 506 506 miles in total yeah. yeah and we're very tired We're at an Airbnb. It's um, it's quite a cool place actually. In fact, most of the accommodation we've been getting is really cool, and the hosts around here are spectacular. Really, they're just so decent. <clears throat> they made us a gourmet meal. Um, you know, we've had so many people coming out and helping us, from guys coming out and just giving us money, sweets, um, riding with us, filming. Um, helping guide us through various cities where they live 
Um, it's all a bit overwhelming sometimes, but um, yeah, trips like this bring out the best of human nature. So um, I'm glad I'm doing this and, you know, it's um, not disappointing me in any way. It's morning on the 28th, I think, 28th of June. This is going to be day five of our trek. I'm just at the Airbnb where we're staying. I've had five hours of sleep. That's the most I've had since we started. Still not enough, but it's the most I've had. My clothes are on the washing line. Four eighteen AM we're about to get going, I better move because today we want to be on time. Yeah. The other bit the other Airbnbs mm -hmm. I benchmark to try and meet. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Uh, these these guys are so nice though. Okay, so Alan, it is five seventeen. We're actually two minutes later than our normal late time. Um, today is the 28th. Today's the 28th and we're in Kinross at number 21A, whatever the road is. Church Street. Church Street. We're at 21A Church Street and we're about to head out now for a long day. Today's about 150, correct? They're, they're about, I think, yeah. Okay, good man. So we're just going to get our um, proof of ride at, uh, at one of the services near here and then we're out. We got our Audax proof of passage uh, and just our Guinness World Record proof of passage and we're leaving Kim Ross. But just look how lovely it looks out here. Even we can appreciate this. I doubt this camera can capture the beauty of this landscape properly. You really need it in high definition to see it. We're riding through Perth, very nice place, Perth. We've just left Perth, we got stuck on the A9 for a while on the dual carriageway. Then we found that it had a cycling lane on the other side and we used that and it took us onto what I think is Route 7 which should take us all the way to Inverness now so we're set, we're heading out. Finally off the A9 again for a while, it was a bit noisy and a bit uh, uncomfortable. It's nice out here. Check that out. But look at this view. Some of the most beautiful places in the world, really. This is Bicycle Route 77. We're gonna run with this to Inverness now. Runs alongside the A9. Some of the surfaces are awful, but it's better than being on there. We're on the National Cycle Network. Uh, we're going to be cruising for a while on this. This is 
Dunkeldon Burnham train station. Turns out Route 7 isn't all that bad. It's actually quite picturesque. Surfaces are good. We're just riding through some park with a massive river down below to the left of us. Go too soon maybe. It's got stones and stuff, but it should improve again. Check this out. Isn't that fantastic? That's where I'm bringing the wife and kids next. This is the A9 above us. Finally back on a nice road, which is very, very rare in Scotland. Very rare smooth road in Scotland. But it's so beautiful here. There's another cyclist down there who kind of helped us with the route. Then she rode off into the sunset. Sorry, sunrise. It's now almost 10 o'clock. And we have covered about 638 miles in total. Of which 34 and a half were done today. Some swans swimming down there on the right. I'm just not even there, don't look at them. Yeah. This is Route 7. It's hilly but beautiful. We're just crossing a bridge. It's covered in locks. I hear sometimes the weight of the locks can pull these bridges down in the end. Still cycle route 7. This is cycling route 7, the old A9. We're heading to Aviemore and Dalwini, etc. We are north of Blair Atoll. And this is a bike only road. Very potholed and hilly, but it's bike only. There's a big river flowing to our left, down in the valley. Cars are far away on the dual carriageway, bikes only on this road.
variability of surfaces. Sometimes it's a road, sometimes it's just a strip. But it's bike only. Seven miles per hour most of the time. Finally, decent. Back rolling at 15 miles an hour. It's been seven miles an hour for hours now. For 20, for 20 miles, we've been going at about seven miles an hour. Now we're back to 15. Proper tarmac probably won't last, but we'll make it count. Finally, left routes. Well, we finally left the um, cycle path because we we're going away from the A9. We're at Dalwini now, so it'll be normal roads from here to John O'Groats. Dalwini distillery. The highest distillery in the world, one of Alan's favorites. Look, there's snow on the mountain. How ridiculous is that? Because yeah. we need to check if you think you heard it. Alan, what's this place called again? Yeah. We're at a place called the Relia Cafe. It is heading towards Avi Moor after Dalwini in the Highlands. I'm sure no one knows where the hell that is if they haven't been here, but uh, that's where we are. Sausages, there's beans on there. <coughs> and I've put my clothes on that bench there. All my washing is drying because we just never have a chance for it to dry. So I've put it on this bench here. And I've left my cycling gloves there so I can't leave it here by accident. Finally have some clean socks and underwear again. I haven't run out. It's just that you know I haven't had they haven't dried since we started this ride. I've bought tons of clothes. We're heading out. We've had a we've had a big lunch of sausages and beans and bread. And we're on 85 miles for the day and 690 694 total. 690 for total. 85 for the day, away we go. Talk about coincidences. Just met the lady who picked me up when my bike's bottom bracket broke when I was doing my end trend in 2016. She just drove by. That was a fantastic coincidence. Um, otherwise, I'm falling apart. I had to stick a plaster on my ear because my glasses are cutting me. And I'm getting a skin reaction on the backs of my legs. Behind both knees, getting some sort of eczema. Too much sunshine and I haven't been putting sunscreen on, on my legs. I've been putting it on my ears and my face and my neck only. 5 p.m. now, 
exactly 5 p.m. and we've reached exactly 700 miles. Today we've ridden 96.4. Trip to AV Mall. Approaching Inverness, we're about 12 miles away. About 12 miles from Inverness. We've decided to use this um, cycle route that Alan was keen on, but um, unfortunately, it's impossible to connect with our route. And now, our route seems to be the the A9. So I'm just trying to find if we can ride here and it looks like we can. So... I'm just going to check it out because we, we are kind of stuck. And um, we need to get across that fourth crossing, that, 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 that fourth road bridge. And, um, and get going now because we're really late. Everything's just falling apart now. It's just a disappointment but it's, uh, it's life. Okay, we're gonna ride it. We, we're gonna bring the bike down the stairs. We're gonna bring the bike down the stairs and then we're gonna ride. Because this is our route. I think Alan should consider coming up here. I know it's a bumpy cycle path, but that's like a motorway. crossing the darned bridge Alan and I are approaching the Cromarthy bridge it's 11 p.m. and it's still not dark we are now about hundred and eight miles from John O'Groats but we'll head there tomorrow we're just heading to Alness which is probably about 10 miles away so we're getting there at midnight Lots of mist at the bridge. All the big bridges we've been to have been covered in mist. And there's Alan, that hero. That's Kim driving away. And that's the Cromarthy Bridge. We're just leaving our accommodation now in Alness. The time is 7.10. We started later today because we finished uh, just before midnight last night. Um, Alan's just coming out. He's there behind me. And we have covered at the moment 763 miles in total. We're getting started for John O'Groats. It's not too far, it's probably a hundred miles, but it'll probably take us all day at the rate we've been going. We're gonna ease ourselves in and just take it from there. <coughs> um, I feel a bit rested, although I only got five hours sleep. Um, today's going to be a good day. God bless you all. quite cold. We're now by the seaside. I don't know if you can see it but that's the sea. It's beautiful here. And we've got a sign coming up with the distance of Wiki 70. That's where we're meeting Thomas. We've got another bridge to cross.
is Dronoch Firth. I think it's our last major bridge. We've ridden 41 miles today. Approaching Helmsdale. Our total is now 800 and four miles. We've ridden 804 miles and we'll be going along the coastline pretty much towards the to, to the end now. Now we're right at the top of the mountain. It's covered in mist. Um, today's a cold day. The end is in sight. 50 miles to Jonathan Roads meeting Thomas at Wick, which is about 25 miles from here. The time right now, the time right now is 20 to 2 in the afternoon. Another two miles of climbing. But the coastline beauty is immaculate. like looking at a satellite map. Fifty miles left to John O'Groats. We're just hauling up a two mile long mountain and we stopped for breakfast, our first meal of the day. Check this out. All the way down there we started round that bend. Two miles. Um, this isn't doing it justice. It is very, very, very long. <clears throat> it is. That's the life around here. life around here but saw the views fast cars beautiful views Thomas, all the way from Germany, and we meet him on the street, River Street. Come on, how are you? Thomas! <laughs> hey, my man! Hey. Good to see you, uh, Thomas! Nice. Well done. Yeah, you too. I don't want to forget him here. Out of all the places, who yeah. the that we meet him? <laughs> hey, it's good to see you, my man. Oh, good fantastic, to see you. fantastic. So you're here, what were you doing all day? So Thomas has explained his story. He bought this bike on eBay so he could do the ride. He set it up. He flew in from Germany, caught a train from Inverness for half hours. He's just been to the bike shop at the corner there. And he's got the bike sorted and he's hoping to do 900 miles on it. Good luck to him. In sideways mostly. Yeah, not so much, not so much in front. It's east, isn't it? Yeah. So it's 16 to John O'Groats. 16 miles. 13 miles to John O'Groats. We'll be there in an hour. Barren and isolated out here. But it's not looking as bad as it did the last time out here.
approaching Jonah Groats, maybe two miles, it's at the sea. Yeah, yeah Shenton maybe, Shenton Island? Or the other, no, they're further away. That's yeah. definitely an island. Yeah. I don't know which. You got Shenton Island here as well. Yes, know. yes, but they keep going far. Oh, very so, far. But those, yeah, those I must be them there. Yeah. We think those are the Shetland Islands. There are many of them, I, I believe. Twenty ninth of June, six fifty three PM. We're entering the ferry port of John O'Groats. Completed half our ride. And there's a famous sign. Oh. We made it. I'm not, I'm not going any further. <laughs> <laughs> you failed. I'm going back. <laughs> you know. This is not the place I came to last time. So we're gonna to have to go down there and get that lady to sign us in. Yeah, I can yeah, see yeah. her. And there we are. 1855. It would be. 1853 is the official time, 1853, we got here. It doesn't really matter because we're leaving tomorrow. Okay, yeah, ready? Okay. Yeah. Right, putting half half of the Ramakai's ashes out here. We are um throw that into the sea. And uh, the other half is for land's end and then our journey's finished. Thanks. We're staying in this caravan on a lovely farm. That's the road to land's end that we came on. John O'Groats port is just over there. It's less than it's less than a mile. And down there is the Sea View Hotel where Adam is staying. We've just left him there. Um, so all of us are here. And then our bikes are in here. <coughs> My throat is hoarse. It's really painful from all the shouting. It's really hard to communicate on the road without shouting because the cars are so loud. So this is where we're at with the Triumph and we now need to tighten our chains because they've seen better days now um, they really need to be tightened for the way back so it looks like just one tightening of the chain will be enough to get us back to Land's End because it took one tightening of the chain to get us here I'm very very happy it took us 5 days and 14 hours Let me do a quick whiz with the camera through the house. <coughs> That's our room. That's Alan and Kim's. That's the living room. The living room is not small, is it? You can properly like relax in here. I think it's lovely. Yeah. a.m. on the 30th of June uh, woke up with very puffy eyes as if I've got two black eyes but I hope it'll settle it's time to ride okay guys we're in John O'Groats Alan Adam Thomas we're heading out John O'Groats. Uh, 90 past 5. 
heading up. That's a castle. It's very beautiful here. We are at 938 miles and 72 miles ridden today. Time is 12.38, midday, and I think today is the 30th of June, now cruising the A9 to Alness, that's my Audax control, the boys are complaining about seat pain, the bike, the road bike boys, um, Alan and I are still okay, the tailwind is really helping us today, we're hovering around 15 miles an hour, just cruising. It's not an easy ride, but it's nice when you're at least going fast. Still beautiful to the left of us. Alan, what's this bridge called? Cromarty Bridge, crossing Cromarty Bridge. We're taking an alternative route to try and not get lost like we did last time. Fingers crossed. Just going through an industrial centre and uh, using my map. We found our way to Cycling Route 7. It's crappy, but it's not the A9. It's the way we came, made life complicated and slow, but we know that it will get us out and back onto the more crappy Route 77. So that's what we're doing. Okay, from here, which way? Oh, it says right. that way. Right there. Yeah. Okay, from here now, I think we're gonna be on roads. But they're undulating, but I think we'll be on roads.
Um, no, we're not. I'm going round. I'll catch you guys round here. We got out of Inverness without too much trouble. We're now on Route 7. It's very hilly here. About 20 miles of riding left for today. We should finish by 9 if we're good. It will be beautiful here, but it will also be boiling hot as we sweat it out on the massive hills. I think that's it for now. Riding into the mountains, lots of steep climbs. We've just come off a 25 percenter and there's some more long ones. But it's nice up here in the farms. Back on the A5, we gave up on Route 7. We've just done a two and a half mile climb. But it's more gradual than what we would have had to face on Route 7, which was getting a bit too much. So we came on the main road just to ease things up a little. It's gradual. So long uphill, long downhill, but not 20%. We're in a place called Carbridge. We slept here. Adam and I stayed in this hotel. That's Adam in there having breakfast. They left it out for us. It is. Five o'clock and Alan's not here. Our bags need p collecting. Um, and we need to get going. This is very unlike Alan to be licked. And this has been a communication mishap here. Um, otherwise we're ready to go. I burnt my tongue. So I can't talk properly. Gonna struggle with eating and stuff like that. Uh, it's disappointing. Over and out. We're starting off at 16 past 5 today. Everybody's okay. We're going to try and use the A5 to save time. Time is 7.51 a.m. We traveled 28 miles today. The total of 1,045 miles. the highlands we're now in Perth and Kinross we've had a terrible headwind I think they're improving now because we're slightly changing direction wow it's been tough but I guess it's worth recording the beauty when we've got rose tinted memories because right now it's just awful to be here Castle, 
This is Dunkeld and Burnham station. And we're on Route 77. It's very tedious. Now there's the kind of machine for the bike parts here. Yep. Approaching Milner Fort. Traveled 1,120 miles. It's near Kinross. And I've nearly lost my voice. Nice view of the countryside. It's been very hilly here. A much better view of the fourth crossings today. No mist. There are actually three bridges. One of them is completely in line with us, so you might not see it apart from these spikes. It is 7.37 and we are on the 4th road bridge. Hey, congrats. Hey, no problem. Thanks for coming. We, um, yeah, we're, 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 really, we're really pleased. Well done. You took to it like a fish to water. <laughs> Don't talk to you about fish now. Oh, <laughs> man. My, my legs are gone. Ah. Oh. Well, legs are fine. It's it, yeah, you've, you've, um, you've, you've had a bit of um, a sit down. <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> The time is 4.40 and we are in Carnworth at the Robinson Arms Hotel. That's Adam's bike, it's going to be dismantled. That's mine. Unfortunately, it's still together because I still have to ride. Right, we're heading out towards Lancaster. Leaving Carver. We seem to have a cold wind. Uh, it's 20 past 5 a.m. And uh, we've left Adam. from Lockerbie. We've made impressive time because of the tailwind and the net downhill. 
this was the toughest part of the journey on the way out. Well, one of the toughest, I can't mention. I can't pick a toughest, there were so many toughest. Okay, we've reached England at 12.30. So it's 12.30 on the 2nd of July, we've reached England. And that's 1,234 miles in total for us. You're on about 360. That is, that's roughly three quarters for you. Yeah, and, and nearly half, half. half nearly, nearly half. half. Yeah. Just gone through the village of Shap. It is 18:08 on the 2nd of July. Today we've covered 107 miles. In total, we've covered 1,274 miles. Just come out to say hello from the Lake District of Kendall. We're heading down, we're heading down Shapfell. It's quite fast, so we're not gonna film for a long time. The views, however, are spectacular. Cool. Oh, cool. <laughs> that's nice. I really like Cornwall. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I probably won't like it when I go there on Thursday, but you know. Four eighteen AM leaving Ian's place and earlier start the morning so we can catch Alan in Lancaster. So this is Khan Fourth. We're leaving Carnforth at 4.18 a.m. Heading to Lancaster. We've picked up Alan now. 18 past 5. Leaving Preston, Andy has joined us again. The washing line is working. Martin's popped out to see us. So now there's a couple of us. Oh man, Anish is back. Just outside Warrington. Just getting through Warrington finally. I'm trying to remember where the hotel is. We're in Shrewsbury, walking to Kim after getting our proof of passage received.
<laughs> I was playing with computer game. Oh! Should I be a driving? We are approaching Ludlow, but this train has halted our progress. We've, still, we've covered 136.5 miles today. It is 7.49 p.m. now. And in total we have covered 1,444 miles. We're getting there. That's a train to... Where's that train to again? That's the one that's Jim Court. Shrewsbury, I think. Okay, Shrewsbury. Or Lancaster. <laughs> Leaving Ludlow. Heading for Hereford. About 22 miles to Hereford. And the time is 8.55 p.m. 8.55 p.m. Heading for Hereford. We've ridden 146 miles today. And in total, 1,453. Sun set at 9.30. 9.30 p.m. sun is setting. About 14 miles from Hereford now. Today is the 4th of July and this is Tom and I in Hereford thinking of how it's going now at the little lodge we're staying at guest lodge we're staying at Let's go guys! It is now 5.22 and we are leaving the travel lodge where Alan was staying Kevin is following behind in the Velo Mobile. Our total distance is 1,563 miles. can't complain about the views up the other side of the hills. That's Tim passing, he's doing some photos. This is a beautiful Tintern Abbey. This is the first time I've seen it properly because I'm coming up this way. I've already seen it coming from the other side and we just flashed by down the hill. I'm sure this is going to be one of the worst hills we've faced in this ride.
Look at this. Gotta come back here with the family just to check this place out. Back at the Severn Bridge, crossing out of Wales back into England. Kevin came on the main road, so he somehow beat us here. He's behind Tom now. Duck down and we're on. I chew gum while I'm riding. Okay. But I only eat when I stop. Unless mm. I've got a box of pizza. Because yes. then you can just pick out a piece of pizza and of eat course. it on the but eating with a spoon is a bit more difficult. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think you've got other shoes in there for when you get out. Yeah. Nice. I don't walk more than five or ten feet in cycling shoes. Yeah. Um, You're not you used just, to them. You just wreck the cleats. Of course. Of course. I think your lights at the back could be brighter. We're now in Devon, heading for Columpton. Columpton's about six miles away. And then for Exeter and Oakhampton. We sleep in Oakhampton. He's a man of few words. <laughs> Okay, the time is 5.51, it's the 5th of July and we are leaving Oakhampton, well 5.52 now, we're leaving Oakhampton, heading for Land's End, it's 93 miles. Victoria services. We stuck with the A30 all the way here. We had no choice really. But we got used to it. We now know how to work it. We're halfway to the end. This is Victoria services. The time is 9.57. Twenty-eight miles from Penzance. We're getting closer now. It's about thirty-eight miles to finish. The 
traffic jam. We're about 30 miles from Land's End now. Approaching Vinzans. We're time trialing it now. There you go, you've done it. Congratulations, congratulations. Fantastic. Hey, thanks for coming. Well done, thanks mate. For coming. Well done. Cheers. Look at that. <laughs> well done. We did it. How do you feel? Fine. It's surprisingly fine, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I think I still this good. I had to chase you, man. Well, we were, <laughs> we were kind of cruising in, but uh, we just wanted it to be over. So, this is the official time. Let, let, let's do it. Let's do a video of it, fantastic. Um, what is the time? 3.37. That's, uh, that's good. That's, uh, that's 11. You should, you should go back now. <laughs> so that's 3.37, that's the official time. Rod is here. Here's the date. I hope we can see it. Whatever it is. 5th of July. So that's 3.37, that's the official time, Rod is here, there's the date, I hope we can see it, whatever it is, 5th of July, so we're done. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these, are, this is the, these are the last ashes of Karai Makaya, we finished our journey. Well, a slight change of scenery now, because earlier this month we introduced you to a Milton Keynes man who wanted to set a new Guinness World Record for riding from Land's End to John O'Groats. But what made Idai Mackay, uh, Mackay different is that he wanted to go there and back again in just 11 days, and he wanted to do it on an ellipticycle. Now, I'm very pleased to say that he managed that challenge, but if you're wondering what on earth an ellipticycle is, take a look at this. Here he comes. It is essentially a cross trainer on wheels. Uh, Idai, thank you so thank much you for joining me. us on Lockheed tonight and huge congratulations. Thank you, you did very it. much. Thank you very much. Um, I have to look at the numbers here because yeah. they're staggering. You cycled 1,767 miles, so about 150 miles a day in a 30 degree heat. How did you do it? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. It was, uh, it was very difficult. It was ex extremely hot. The roads were melting. Um, we couldn't keep up with the hydration. Some of the guys who were joining us to ride for a couple of hours drank, you know, a litre an hour as they were riding with us. So I'm not sure how I did it. <laughs> But no doubt the support was absolutely crucial for you, having your friends and other absolutely, people there. Absolutely, absolutely. Support was everything. We had lots of friends, lots of cyclists coming to join us, even people I didn't know. Um, but I also had really close friends who were supporting me. Um, a lady called Kim, who was the wife of my friend Alan, who does a lot of my rides with me. And he did this whole ride with me. So I had... I was never alone, not not for one minute. I hope he's not. I hope he's not rethinking that friendship after oh, this I, momentous journey. I have a feeling we may not visit each other again. 
<laughs> um, we should say, this wasn't just about setting a record for you. You did this ride in memory of your brother. Just tell us why. Yes, uh, my brother passed away in February last year in a skydiving event. Um, it was it was really unfortunate. It was um, one of the most tragic things I've, I've ever experienced personally. And um, cycling is probably the, the only way of communication I have uh, in terms of that's my community, that's what I do. So I decided to do a cycling challenge to help um, spread word about a project that I'm doing in memory of my brother and to help raise funds for that project as well. And that's the main reason that I did this challenge and world record. And that's about creating some kind of film. That's right. It's a, it's a film about the skydiving community that my brother Garai set up, um, but also a film that's intended to raise funds for the charities that he used to work with through his skydiving. Well, it's an amazing thing you've done. I want to ask you about the ellipticycle. I'm just going to come round here for a second. Course, I said like a cross trainer on wheels. That's not offensive, is it? That's what it not is. Not at all. This, this is a cross trainer on wheels designed to give a uh, supported running action. So these bikes are used generally for marathon running training. People who ride these bikes um, are trying to get a running without impact type workout. So it is a fitness bike, but it's it's still cycling. It's still a bike and it's very comfortable for long distances. I'm so desperate to have a go, but in these heels and without a risk assessment, I'm sure there's no way I could. <laughs> maybe later if maybe you hang later, around for after the program. Later, but um, not today. You are very used to riding this thing. I I've am. got to ask though, after all of those miles, how are your feet today? You know, it's amazing. My feet are actually okay. My feet didn't suffer. I, I was surprised because your feet can suffer if you're standing for 15 hours a day, but my feet were okay. I did have a foam roller type thing that I used to roll under my feet every evening after 15 hours of riding and that probably helped do the trick. I get a feeling this won't be your last challenge. I really, really hope we meet you again when you're doing the next one. For now, though, huge congratulations. Thank no you, doubt Jenny. your brother would be hugely proud. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, well, it's been a lovely day at uh, the BBC HQ in Cambridge today. Let's find out what the forecast is in store. Here's Alex.